Is that how you pronounce it? Quack? Or quack? Not quack, quack. A duck says quack. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel where we talk about interesting true crime cases, murders, mysteries and conspiracies, mainly from Hungary. So if you are interested in this kind of content, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Today we talk about the Hungarian Giulia Tofana, a woman called Gerzsány Maria. And she was infamous for murdering dozens of babies and unwanted husbands. She's also known as the Black Widow because first she murdered her own husbands, her own family members, and then later she extended her new hobby and interest to the other members of her community. And her weapon of choice was arsenic. So original for her time. So Gerzsa Maria was born in the city of Kiskun in 1864, but she actually lived in a small town, or probably at the time it was a, a village, called Kistelek. To me this is crazy because my family, my father's side, is from that area of the country and I grew up spending many years of my life there on our family plantations and... I honestly did not know about this case until like a few days ago. Now, Gerzsány Maria was born into a very poor peasant family, so there is almost no documentation on her life. We don't know who she was, who her parents was, how she grew up. There is like no information on her upbringing. What we do know is that she was an occupational midwife. As you must know already, that in the early 1900s there was no general health care yet, so women didn't go to the hospital to give birth with doctors. Rather, every village had their own midwives who helped with these kind of things. What is notable about her being a midwife is that she delivered 95 babies to this world. However, 78 of those babies were reported to the authorities as stillborns. Even compared to the high child mortality rate, this was an alarmingly high number of dead babies. Other than being a midwife, she also practiced as a healer, more like a self-proclaimed healer, that most people would describe as a quack. And rumor has it that she even dipped her toes into the human trafficking trade and she probably mediated young girls and sold them into sex slavery. But I cannot confirm that, so this is probably just false accusations to make her look even worse. On top of that, she was the resident abortionist in the village. So every time somebody had an unwanted pregnancy, she would solve it for these young girls in exchange for money, of course. Before she got caught for the crimes that we are going to talk about right now, she was investigated in 24 separate smaller crimes, but she got away with all of them. So you may wonder, okay, so she was possibly a pimp, a midwife, a healer, an abortionist, what else? On top of all of these, she was also a manitor and she had no less than five husbands. Now, not all of these marriages were official civil marriages, some of them were just self-proclaimed. But what is common with all of her husbands is that every single one of them died suddenly and in mysterious circumstances. Do you see where this is going? So would you be surprised if I told you that all of these husbands had hefty life insurance policies taken out on them and the beneficiary was always Maria? We do not know almost anything about who these husbands were or how they died or when. There is very little information. We only know of one of them. You see, in 1905, she was living together with her newest unofficial husband called Lotzko Ferenc. And Maria took out a life insurance policy on him before he died of 340 Hungarian crowns which today's time would be about 4,300 US dollars. And you may think, oh, this is incredibly low. What kind of life insurance policy would only pay $4,000? Don't forget that they were peasants. They were uneducated people. And this was an a very high number for them. So suddenly this young, healthy, strong man just falls ill and died on the 11th of December in 1905. As I said, this is all we know about her life, her background and her husband. 
So now let's talk about how she built up this reputation of being the Hungarian Julia Tofana. You see, Maria built up a business of portioning out lethal doses of arsenic to miserable wives. For those that lack the courage to administer the drug themselves to the unsuspecting husbands, in exchange for some extra charge, Maria would do that as well. Not only that, she also had a satisfaction guarantee, so in case the poison wasn't strong enough, she would issue a new, stronger batch, completely free of charge. 10 per 10 customer service. And she also put a huge emphasis on advertising her business. She made sure that every single one of the miserable wives in shitty marriages knew where to go if they wanted to get out of their relationships. Even though the police was catching on that something was not right, they could not really investigate or arrest her for anything because she and her clientele kept their mouths shut. It was nobody's interest to be caught, of course. This is also very similar to the Stevie Pipes case, so you can also watch that video that I covered a few weeks ago. It took the police six years to finally get hold of her. You see, in 1911, a woman called Palinkas Janosne, aka Mrs. Palinkas, uh, she went to her friend, Maria, to have a chit chat, and she started complaining about her shitty alcoholic husband and how much she hated him. So, Maria, of course, was like, mm, This is my time to advertise my business. So, she offered to sell arsenic to Mrs. Palinkash so that she could get rid of her husband. Now, Mrs. Palinkash went to the police after this chat right away, and she told them about what. Maria just offered to do for her. So the police took the chance and persuaded Mrs. Palinkash to be their snitch. So they gave her the money for the arsenic, but they marked the banknotes and so that they would be able to recognize it later. So Mrs. Palinkash goes back to Maria and says, okay, I want to buy the arsenic. So she gives her the money and gets a vial of the poison. But she gave this vial to the police right away. Now, what happened next, though, is that Maria was walking around in the village and saw Mr. Palinkash walking around all healthy and alive. So she went to Mrs. Palinkash and told her, like, hey, is the poison not working? Do you want me to issue a stronger batch, a stronger concoction? So... Mrs. Palinkash did that again with the money that the police gave her, that was again marked, and she got the new poison, the fresh batch. So Mrs. Palinkash gave this to the police as well. Now the police wanted to confirm that this was truly arsenic, so they went straight to the village's pharmacist, who was able to confirm that that was indeed poison. So this is how the police was able to arrest her. You see, when they went to search her house, they found the marked banknotes that Mrs. Palinkash paid with, and they also found enough poison in her house that would kill at least a dozen men. So the police goes to the local cemetery and start exhuming all the bodies that they could. Now, according to the allegations, there were up to 40 people that were killed with the poison. However, the police was, of course, unable to exhume all 40 people. It was already... Years later, the bodies were all decomposed, so they only exhumed three of the people that they were sure of that they would be able to extract the traces of the arsenic. So that's what they did. They exhumed these three bodies and they found the traces of the poison. More and more people decided to come forward and tell the truth that they were the clients of her because they figured it would be best to just admit to the crimes before they get caught otherwise. As you can guess, Maria was in very deep shit. She said that all of the people that testified that she sold poison to them were just actually jealous ill-wishers and she basically denied all allegations. However, the evidence against her was mounting and the trial started very soon after the crimes were unveiled. So you may know that trials back then took much less time, it was much less official 
And also Hungary doesn't have a jury, so the power is all in the hand of the judge. She was only charged with three first-degree murders in the cases where the arsenic was found in the bodies. However, nobody could really prove beyond reasonable doubt that all of those 40-something men and the stillborn babies died at her hands. In the end, the judge sentenced her to life in prison for the three first-degree murders, conspiracy and complicity, and she was sent to the prison in Maria Nostra. Now, you may think that the story ends here, but it doesn't. While in prison, she actually inherited a very hefty life insurance policy that was from the death of her sister-in-law that was, again, some $4,000. So she was swimming in cash. On top of that, she only spent six years in prison of her life sentence. And this was because the First World War started and the then Council Republic did not know what to do with the prisoners so they just set her free. So she goes back to Kistulek and she sets up her old business as a midwife, as a healer. And very soon after, her first client came to her that wanted to get rid of her alcoholic husband. So as soon as she was preparing to create the poison, the police just got hold of her and arrested her again and sent her back to prison. Now, this time in the jail in Seged. Now, this all happened in 1920. So she was free for like two years. Who knows what kind of shit she was doing in those two years, honestly. And when she was sent back to prison, she finished her life sentence as she died in prison. But I cannot tell you how she died or when she died, there is no information on that. She killed at least three men, for sure, but there are allegations of those 40 other men that probably died and could not be proven, besides her five husbands that she most likely killed too. And let's not forget that how the heck did 78 of those babies that she helped deliver to this world were still born? Like, how? Tell me those were not, like, murders. Tell me she did not commit, she did not kill those babies for the mothers who did not want to keep their children. And I'm not judging the women that did not want to keep their babies or they asked for an abortion. I totally understand that. But... Knowing all that we know about Maria, I really assume that she was actually a child murderer, like probably a cold-blooded murderer killing babies too. Is it possible that she was just a woman who practiced natural healing, who was the helper of mothers and women who were in miserable marriages or were, had unwanted pregnancies and then just time and the media made her out to be this terrible witch who was like a serial killer in cold blood. I don't know, I think that's possible too. We see in history how women who do something for other women are considered criminals. But with all the evidence, I am more inclined to say that she was actually this cold-blooded serial killer that she is. It's very similar to the Giulia Tofana case, so the conclusion is quite similar. Let me know what you think. So if you have any recommendations on what I should film next, don't be shy, let me know in the comments. I take all kinds of requests. I am willing to film videos on underrepresented or unknown cases that nobody else is really talking about. It doesn't have to be from Hungary, it can be from any country, and I will try to use my platform to give voice to those that are not talked about. So if you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, you know the drill. It really helps me out with the algorithm if you do that and engage under my video. So thanks for watching. Bye!